Hello, my name is Sarah Dawn, and welcome to another episode of Friday Night Frights. Tonight we're going to examine the cryptic death of a man called the Somerton Man. This is a story about a body that was found on a beach that to this day has never been identified. It involves an undeciphered code, people keeping secrets, and a very rare book. The one thing this story doesn't have is a complete answer. This story begins on Somerton Beach in Adelaide, Australia. The date is December 1st, 1948. Two jockeys are walking with their horses on the beach around 5.30 a.m. They notice a man leaning on the seawall and he appears to be sleeping. After walking for a half an hour, they came back to the same spot where the man was and he looked unmoved. Worried, they went up to him to ask if he was okay. To their shock, the man was dead. Two swimmers came out of the ocean to see what the commotion was about and they contacted the police. Constable John Moss was the first to arrive on scene. He noticed that the body was propped up sitting against the seawall. His legs were crossed, his eyes were shut, his mouth was shut, and it just appeared to be looking like he was sleeping. The man was wearing an extremely nice suit and dress shoes. The sand next to the body was undisrupted and his shoes had no sand on them making people believe that he never walked to the beach and probably died before somebody had set him there. Any tags that could have possibly had names on them had all been snipped off of his clothing. In his suit pockets, the police found a bus ticket, a train ticket, two hair combs, a pack of juicy fruit, matches, and cigarettes. There were no IDs or wallet. Using the tickets found in the man's pocket, the police had determined that the man arrived at Adelaide on November 30th by train. At the train station, the man had also purchased another ticket for a train heading to Henley Beach Station. That was the ticket that they had found in his pocket. But he never took the train to Henley Beach Station. Instead, he bought a bus ticket and took a bus to St. Leonard's. It's still unknown why the man had purchased a ticket for Henley Beach when he ended up going to St. Leonard's near Somerton. The police thought there could only really be two options for his death. It was either a natural death and he had some underlying disease or illness because his body looked to be in perfect physical health. He also appeared to be around 45 years of age, so any health conditions would probably be hidden. The other option was foul play and the most likely suspect would be poison, since there was no visible physical trauma to the body. When an autopsy was performed, it was found out that he was in peak physical condition and didn't seem to have any underlying illness or diseases. His heart looked fantastic. However, his organs did have blood pooling, which was consistent with poisoning. But all toxicology reports came back negative. Of course, there are poisons that are untraceable in the blood system or on toxicology reports, but they're fairly rare. This sparked a lot of debate among the doctors working on the case. Some believed it could be an untraceable poison, but others thought that would be highly unlikely. A picture of the man was put out to the public to see if anybody could identify him, but no one ever came forward with an accurate identification. His fingerprints and dental records were untraceable. It was almost as if this man had never existed. On January 14th, the Adelaide train station contacted the police about a suitcase that had been checked in on November 30th, but was never claimed since, and they believe it could have possibly belonged to the Somerton man. The suitcase looked brand new and was unlocked, and inside were most normal things, PJs, slippers, clothes, shaving supplies. But then there were a few odd things, such as a table knife shaved down to be small and sharp, scissors, and an electrician's screwdriver. All tags, or anything that could be considered identifiable, were removed from the suitcase. There was nothing majorly off about the suitcase, but of course the police took it into evidence. In April 1949, they decided to re-examine the body and clothing with multiple experts since they never had any leads. One expert knew that the threading and stitching of the man's custom-made suit could only be found in America. The same stitching was found in the suitcase, which linked the suitcase and the man indefinitely. This also made it more likely that the man wasn't in fact Australian and could possibly be American, or he had spent a lot of time in America. One of the experts examining the body found a hidden pocket in the waistband of the man's suit. Inside of the pocket was a small rolled up piece of paper with the words Tamim Should. Book experts were brought in to examine the little piece of paper. They determined that this piece of printed paper came from a book called The Brubiate of Omar Khayyam. The phrase Tamim Should comes from the last sentence of the whole book, and it translates from Persian to English as, it is ended. 
The Book of Poems was originally written in Persian, but was made in an English translation by Edward Fitzgerald in 1859, and was actually considered a semi-popular book at the time. However, the experts knew that this specific piece of paper came from a very rare copy of the book. In one way, this would make it easier to find the exact specific book that this piece of paper came from. On the other hand, because the book was so rare, chances of finding the book were really low. Months went by and there was never any new evidence, so the police decided it was time to bury the body. Before they buried it, they made a plaster casing of his face and his head and his shoulders, just in case someone came along and tried to identify him in the future. He was buried under a headstone that reads, Here lies the unknown man that was found on Somerton Beach. Fast forward to July 22nd, 1949. A man comes forward with a copy of the Rubiate. He claimed that he had found this book in his car around the same date that the dead body was found on the beach. He also let police know that he'd often parked his car next to that beach and left it unlocked. He had visited this beach a lot, so he couldn't pinpoint an exact date, but he figured somebody just opened his car and put the book in there. This was the rare copy of the book that they had been looking for, and when they opened it up to the last page of the book, the last sentence was missing, and the piece of paper matched this book. There was also some faint writing on the back of this book. The majority of the writing on the back of the book is actually a code that to this day has been undeciphered. Even code experts have been unable to de decipher the code, but they have determined that whatever the code is, it would be in the English language. There was also a telephone number scribbled onto the book along with the code. It led the police to a nurse named Jessica Thompson. She lived only five minutes away from the Somerton Beach with her one-year-old son, Robin. The police asked Jessica to come in for an interview, and they showed her the plaster bust that they had made of the man. It said that when she saw this bust, she broke out into tears and even almost fainted. Even though she seemed extremely shook by seeing the bust, she told the police that she did not know this man and didn't know why there'd be a piece of the Rubiate in his pocket. However, she did tell the police that at one time she had owned a copy of the Rubiate, but had given it to a man named Alfred Boxel, and perhaps for some reason he had scribbled her number into the book, and maybe it was the same copy of the book. The police tracked down Alfred Boxel, who still had his copy of the book that Jessica gave him, and it was fully intact, no pieces missing. This just led police to another dead end that was unexplained. A forensic doctor took a look at the bust and pictures of the dead man and realized that he had two very distinct characteristics. The first characteristic was that he had a genetic feature on his ear. His simba and his cavum were the exact same size. This genetic deformity occurs in only roughly 2% of Caucasian males. He also had another genetic deformity called hypodontia, which affected his two top incisors. This means that he was missing his two top incisors, the ones right here, in between your canine tooth and your front teeth. This condition is extremely rare and usually runs in families. Many years later, it was realized that somebody unknowingly related to this case had the exact same genetic features. Robin Thompson, Jessica's son. It's often thought that Robin Thompson may be the unidentified man's son. Although Jessica Thompson maintained until her death that she did not know the man. Fast forward 65 years later, the year is 2013. Jessica Thompson's daughter Kate reveals that her mother did in fact know the man found on Somerton Beach. Kate claims that her mother told her that she knew the man, but never told Kate who he actually was. She also uncovered that her mother could speak Russian with no explanation, and her mother had also once told her that the police will never find a solution to this man's murder because there were people above the police that already knew who this man was. Robin passed away in 2009, never knowing who his real father was. Although forensic scientists believe that the chances of both Robin and the unknown man having the exact same genetic features is almost impossible. It's too much of a coincidence that Robin was related to this case and that they have the same genetic features, it's almost an impossibility. The chances are extremely high that Robin was the unknown man's son. Even Robin's family to this day believes that the Somerton man was his father. His daughter Roma Egan and her daughter Rachel believe it so much that they even went to the Australian court to ask for his body to be exhumed to do further DNA testing to prove that they were related to him. Unfortunately, the courts denied this request. The body was never exhumed and the story still remains a mystery. Even if they did exhume the body and the DNA matched Robin's family, 
It still doesn't identify who the man actually was, although it may open more clues to find out who he was. This story is full of dead ends and leaves more questions than it does answers. The number one theory around this case is that the unknown man was actually a spy. This conspiracy makes a lot of sense. It was the start of the Cold War. He was dressed extremely nice in a suit. He was obviously an international traveler. And Jessica spoke Russian for some reason and told her daughter that people above the police already knew who this man was. But again, that's all just a conspiracy theory. And no one knows why he had a torn piece of the rubiate in his pocket that said, it is ended. That part of the puzzle's never been figured out. What do you think the real story of the Somerton man is? Do you think he was a spy? Do you think he's Robin's father? The evidence is quite stacking, but nothing has ever been proven. Do you think his identity will always remain unknown? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching Friday Night Frights. If you liked this episode, please leave me a like and let me know to continue making more. Remember to subscribe for more episodes and to be updated when I upload new videos. And I hope to see you on a Friday in the near future.